Um, we grew up in Fargo, North Dakota. Do we have any Midwesterners out there? Where are you from? Montana? Oh, your neighbor. <laughs> okay. Um, so people in Fargo and Montana are very friendly. Um, but when I was growing up there, I really stood out. A lot of my classmates didn't look like me or my brother. Um, my parents, I felt, were very different from my classmates' parents. They, I felt they were a lot less strict with them. They, my classmates got to stay out later. They ate different kinds of food at dinner. They had hamburgers and french fries, and we tended to have lots of curry and kebabs and rice. And um, I didn't really appreciate that till I grew older. So oftentimes I felt like I didn't really fit in in, in North Dakota. Uh, how many of you are international students here? And how many of you are immigrants or kids of immigrants? Okay, it's very diverse. Um, and this area in New York is, is more diverse than North Dakota was at that time and, and still is today. But uh, I don't know if you've ever felt you haven't fit in. And when I was a kid, I often felt that way. So I didn't try very hard to learn about my parents' backgrounds of Iran and Japan, even though I did go to Japan a few times as a kid, teaching kids English here. But I never went to my father's country of Iran. And here I'm at college, I played soccer. I heard there's some soccer players here as well. Um, I, when I got to college in Minnesota, I learned that it was OK to be different, and it was also kind of cool. Uh, I also started for the first time to think about uh, deeper questions like the meaning and purpose of my life. And I felt like a lot of pressure, like I had to decide what I was going to do. Um, as a freshman because it was going to affect the rest of my life and if I didn't figure it out I wouldn't have any meaning in my life. Uh, but the problem was I didn't know how to give my life meaning. The mission of our college at Concordia helped me. It was something like to influence the affairs of the world by sending into society informed and thoughtful men and women. And I looked up the mission of this college. I think it has five parts, doesn't it? It's really long. Um, but this mission, I thought about it, said to influence the affairs of the world. So to find meaning in my life, I'm going to influence the affairs of the world. I want to make an impact on the world. But I wasn't sure how. How do you hope to influence the world yourselves? It might be through your relations with friends and family, through community service, or maybe through your jobs. I thought, OK, what am I going to do as a job? This will give me meaning. This will help me make an influence on the world. I was an undeclared major my first year in college. And I had no idea what to do. But a friend of mine, a classmate of mine, said, you should check out the campus TV station, the campus TV program. So I went, and I saw how they're putting together reports and hosting these programs for just other students to watch. It was on local cable TV, and I really liked it. I liked um, what you said about interviewing people, getting to learn new things every day, and then teaching others about what I was learning. I thought, OK, this is going to be good for me and maybe good for other people too. So I decided to major in journalism. And what I really wanted to do at that point was to become a foreign news correspondent. I was studying French. Uh, that was one of the options we had. We didn't have a ton of different languages in college at the time. So I wanted to become a correspondent in a French-speaking country. Um, but I got a little detoured for a year because one day I picked up the phone and there was a woman on the other line and she said, Roxana, I'm the director of the Miss Fargo pageant and we have only three girls trying out for the pageant. We need at least four. And do you want to be the fourth one? And I said, no, not really. Um, but my mom found out about it. And she actually encouraged me to do it because there was a talent competition. And I had just quit piano lessons after 15 years. And she was sad that I didn't practice anymore. Anyway, <laughs> I did it. Somehow won that and became Miss North Dakota and then went around the state speaking for a year about cultural appreciation. And I got enough scholarships to go to grad school in journalism. So um, it was a great, actually, great opportunity. And then I went to another grad school for international relations. And during this whole time, I still wanted to be a foreign news correspondent. So after I got out of grad school for the second time, I thought, OK, I'm going to start reporting overseas. But my first job was actually back in Fargo, North Dakota, my hometown. And those first few months, I felt a little sorry for myself because I thought I was supposed to be influencing the affairs of the world. 
there I was reporting on blizzards and potholes in Fargo, North Dakota. But after a few months, I snapped out of it, and I realized I had a lot to learn where I was. I had great colleagues who were teaching me a lot, and I had the possibility to have an impact on my own community. So I realized that I could make a difference, and we can make a difference wherever we are if we have the right attitude. But still my heart was set on going overseas, and as time went on, the country I wanted to go to was not a Francophone country, not a French-speaking country, but I decided I wanted to go to Iran. I was half Iranian, but I didn't know that part of my identity. And I couldn't speak Farsi much. I wanted to learn the Farsi language. Also, 9-11 happened, and Iran was becoming more and more important in the region and in the world, and I wanted to be there reporting on it. So I ended up going to uh, Houston. Sorry, flip through the Fargo shots. I ended up going to Houston to work as a journalist. And while I was there, I got an opportunity to go to Iran and set up a bureau for an American news agency called Feature Story News. Some of my friends were supportive, but others said, I don't think it's a good idea. I mean, America and Iran haven't had diplomatic relations since just after the Islamic Revolution of 1979, which was led by this man, Ayatollah Khomeini, who's coming down the stairs here, when he returned to Iran from exile. And um, there's no U.S. embassy in Iran. There hasn't been a U.S. embassy since just after the revolution. So what if you get in trouble? Who's going to help you? There's a Swiss embassy that represents U.S. interests. Some of my other friends pointed out that they'd seen images like this of people saying death to America down with the USA. Are you sure you want to go to a country like that? They asked me. And I thought, well, I want to learn about the stories beyond the headlines and beyond Im images like this. I want to see what people think. Do they really think like this? Or is it more, more complex and more diverse than what meets the eye? Plus, I was thinking that being a correspondent in Iran would help me influence the affairs of the world, like the mission of my college taught us to do. It would help me make a difference in the world. And it was something that my heart was telling me to do. What's your heart telling you to do? And will you follow it? Sometimes when you do listen to your heart, people who even really love you and are close to you might discourage you from doing so or warn against it. And it's likely you will face a lot of obstacles, but you can also find a lot of fulfillment 